based on the 1954 Italian novel Il Dispezzo by Alberto Moravia. Contempt shows us the slow and gradual tearing apart of a couple in Italy. Camille, played by Brigitte Bardot, gradually has the impression that her husband Paul, played by Michel Piccoli, no longer looks at her and no longer loves her, while her husband has to get down to rewriting a screenplay for the adaptation of Homer's Odyssey being filmed at Cinecitta by Fritz Lang, playing himself. Doubt and then contempt will arise in Camille, and from there she will succumb to the incomprehension and anger of Paul. The couple will not survive it. But Contempt, released in 1963, is not only a love story with a stunning backdrop, but so much more. At the heart of the couple, at the very center of love, the gaze. From the first scene of the film, a voiceover already mentions it. The cinema, said André Bazin, substitutes for our gaze a world that agrees with our desires. Contempt is the story of this world. Godard announces that ultimately for him, it will not be the crux of love, but love itself, the gaze. The famous phrase, do you find my buttocks pretty? I love you totally, tenderly, tragically, shout the dependence of the gaze of the other, dependence on being loved, but also on existing. The look that Camille tracks down in her husband is constant. She wants to summon the eye or sometimes also provoke him. For her, her husband betrayed her when he stopped observing her. Her gaze is like the gaze of statues, the same ancient statues that cross the film from side to side, recalling the Homeric Odyssey experienced by the couple. But this is not the only connection Godard makes between the Odyssey and the couple. As Paul and Camille discuss the Odyssey, Paul states, I agree with Prokash's theory that Ulysses loves his wife, but she doesn't love him. The audience can clearly see the lack of Camille's reaction further solidifying the linkage between the Odyssey and the couple's declining love. Furthermore, a crew member on set comments, I should have done a scene at the beginning, in which the gods discuss the man's fate, in general, and the fate of Ulysses, in particular. Here, we can also see the comparison between Ulysses and Paul, one a Greek king, and the other a scriptwriter. Yet both are relevant, even though they vastly contrast each other. Both wonder about their fate. This is the great connection between the two storylines, the beauty and pain of cinema and how it all too often relates back to our own demons, so gracefully presented in Le Mépris. This is reflected in the writing of the film, since Godard's simple, real dialogue hits the viewer hard. Rather than creating a falsely dramatic, movie magic script, present in many Hollywood movies today. There is no drama in the very real and blunt idle conversation that characters Camille and Paul have in establishing their feelings for one another. As Paul questions as to why Camille has been acting so distant, she simply replies with, it's true, I don't love you anymore. Then Paul asks, you still loved me yesterday? And Camille replies with, yes, very much, now it's over. With statements along the way from Camille such as, that's life, there is a melancholy reality which is in great contrast to today's long and convoluted film writing. Nevertheless, contempt is still elegant since each spoken word is valuable, pushing the story forward. Another element of contempt is nature, often shot with slow, subtle caressing camera movements, is the secret glue of the plot. Set in the beautiful island of Capri, melancholy and mourning are mixed with the sunlight and dreamy landscape of the island. Cinematographer Raoul Coutard contrasts light and dark, showing the unexpected nature of life. We associate color and light with positivity, yet the fact is that however life changes, the world around us still remains the same. Nature interacts with characters, it is the only thing to remain pure. They are, in Godard's opinion, the only real gods of modern times. The rest is nothing. It is by the sea that Paul and Camille see themselves for the last time. She is having a swim, he is sitting on a rock. The vital sea, in this case, represents a barrier, one of life's contradictions. At the beginning of the movie, 
there is a 30-minute scene in their flat where tension and anger rises between the couple. During this scene, Godard cleverly uses the widescreen format to crush perspective and to always show Paul and Camille separated by a wall, a door, a lamp, as if using a split-screen technique. Strongly opposing colors, red sofas representing anger and white walls representing peace, increase the feeling of anxiety and of the wife's contempt. Light invades the apartment. The mysterious female statue is seen, a representation of the gods return again, which stands up against the wall with her head bowed down, as if in shame for watching this domestic row. Finally, the sentence which best summarizes the meaning of the film comes from Godard himself. Contempt is a story of men cut off from themselves, from the world, from reality. They awkwardly seek their way back to the light, but they are enclosed in a dark room. Godard's characters, namely Paul, are prisoners of their own reality, a reality created by Godard's mise-en-scene, and this time, neither death nor the cinema will be able to free them. And the film ends with the mysterious sea.